Welcome everyone, my name is Brandon Summers. I'm the PFR lead here at our Henderson, Kentucky location. With me today, I've got Camille Lambert. She is our field agronomist for the Southern Marketing Area. And we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about corn and soybean planting date studies that we've done for a very long time within PFR. And also a new study for us this past year was our replant threshold study. And this was a customer favorite that came in on tours this past year. So we're gonna start with the corn planting date study. And this is found on page 12 of the 2020 PFR book. And like I said, we've done this for a very long time in PFR, over 17 years. When we look at that data, you'll see that April the 1st through the 15th came in as our optimum planting date. But if we look a little further into that study, you'll see that we didn't lose our yield potential at a very fast rate as we move throughout the growing season. So Camille, why would we want to target that earliest planting date and why might it be shown to be slightly better? Yeah, so when we talk about the corn plant, um, the first thing that, that I think about really is pollination. So if we can get through pollination um, before it gets super hot, we know we're going to be successful. The corn plant kind of starts to shut down once we get to that 86 degree temperature to conserve water and energy. And so if we get through that, that's going to be good. But then some of our late season diseases that move in, southern rust down here can be very de detrimental. So if we can get through some of the critical growth stages before some of those things happen, we're going to be successful. But then if we think about early season, the corn plant really determines a lot of its yield early. So that's where, you know, we don't see that drop off occur. So we want to make sure that we're planning into ideal conditions because you do have a really good window. So you don't want to go out there one day too early because that could hurt you. You just want to make sure that you're, you're planning into great conditions because some of those really important things happen very early in the growing season for corn. When we talk about soybeans, that's not so much the case. So you don't want to tell us about a planning date on soybeans? Yeah, so if you look on page 14 of the 2020 PFR book, we've got our planning date study for soybeans. And we've done this for over 20 years within PFR across all of our locations. So it's a really strong data set. And as you can see, when we start planting on April the 1st, mm -hmm. as we move through the growing season, we do nothing but lose some yield potential. So the earlier we can get those planted, the higher we're maximizing our yield potential throughout the growing season. So Camille, what might be some reasons that we're seeing that in our yield data? Yeah, so you talk about that and that's it's something that I bring up quite a bit because once we get to that May 15th and that's where you see it kind of drop off, um, especially with our group four soybeans, we're gonna start to lose about half a percentage point per day on our yield potential. So I think that's something that's really important to note. But soybeans, um, they're an indeterminate plant, the ones that we're planting now anyways. And so they're gonna keep vegetating a little bit as we enter those reproductive growth stages. But I think it's really important to know that soybeans are a photosensitive plant meaning that they respond to day length, or more importantly, they respond to how long the nights are. And so as, as the nights get longer, that's when it's going to trigger that plant to start to flower. And that's why everybody talks about summer solstice, June 21st. As the nights start to get longer, it's going to trigger that plant to flower. And so our earlier planted soybeans, they actually might shoot some flowers before that timing. That's kind of can be a good indicator of high yield potential soybeans. Um, but that's kind of why you see, you know, I always tell people the soybeans that are grown on highways with the, the lights on, at night on the cars and some of the street lamps, they stay green longer because they're tricked into thinking that it's not time for them to flower yet. So if we can get those plants to flower um, earlier, it can be a really good thing. So when we plant soybeans early like this, there are some risk of weather events like frost or heavy rains that could force us into a replant situation. And one of the many questions that we tried to answer last year in PFR was with a new study called the Replant Threshold Study. We did this on 15 inch rows and 30s, but for today we're gonna to talk about the 15 inch row data. You can find this on page 152 of the 2020 PFR book. So in this study, we went out with our soybean planter. We plugged some of the plates in the planter so we'd get a sporadic stand it, to truly simulate a replant situation where we're trying to make that decision. Do we replant or not? And we planted populations anywhere from 100,000 to 40,000. And Camille and I spent a lot of time out in this plot that past summer, and we looked at it as it was coming out of the ground. It went through the, uh, some very cold temperatures there in April, and we really thought we were gonna have to replant the replant study at one point, but uh, we got some very cool data out of this. What we found was that we can keep a stand as low as 70,000 and still out yield a full population of 135,000 planted in late May. So 
Uh, that number was a little bit lower than her and I uh, anticipated, but it was something that we are very excited to continue doing for 2021. So Camille, what could be some of the reasons that the lower population planted early beat the higher population planted later? Sure, so it goes back to that whole photosensitive time period, right? So if we plant early, we give that, that plant a little bit more time to put on vegetation before it gets triggered that it needs to flower. But I think also um, the, the amount of nodes that go on the plant, we know when we have more nodes on those plants, we're gonna have the potential for more pods. And so we actually counted the number of nodes early versus the number of no nodes late, and we had more nodes early. And I think another good thing to talk about is when we give those plants more room lower populations they're going to put on a lot more branches but then the part I always like to relate to is return on investment when we can lower our seeding rate you know say you're out there planting 175,000 you may want to drop it down a little bit because that can actually save you quite a bit of money it's going to be about four dollars um, for every 10,000 seeds that you add so it's a it's a good study we're excited to do it again um, and see what what it's going to look like in 2021. We hope you enjoyed the video today. We encourage you to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have any questions about this video, feel free to reach out to your local BEX representative. Thanks. Thanks.